Welcome, everyone. I'm Tony Segreto, an Orange Bowl committee member and a longtime sports and news anchor in South Florida and for NBC Network. Welcome to the third in our series of In the Trenches, an exciting college football video series featuring a behind-the-scenes look at some of the most iconic Orange Bowl games through the eyes of some of the great players and coaches who are actually a part of them. And today, we will look back at the 65th Orange Bowl Classic, 1999. In fact, it's the final Orange Bowl Classic ever played in the old Orange Bowl Stadium, and it featured Steve Spurrier's Florida Gators in that fun-and-gun offense against Big East champion Syracuse led by Donovan McNabb, a game that the Gators won 31-10. to How honored are we today that we are joined by the head ball coach himself, Steve Spurrier, along with Jesse Palmer from the Gators. Now, as you know, Coach Spurrier won the 66 Heisman Trophy, led the Gators over Georgia Tech in the 67 Orange Bowl. So not only did he coach in it, he played in it, became head coach of Florida in 90 after stints at Duke and the Tampa Bay Bandits of the USFL. And in 12 years at Florida, he won six SEC titles, a national title, and played for another. His teams were ranked in the top 15 all 12 years and in the top 10 nine times, and they averaged more than 10 wins per season. As for Jesse, he alternated a quarterback with Doug Johnson and then Rex Grossman, but Johnson actually fractured his ankle in the second quarter of that Orange Bowl game. We'll hear Jesse talk about that. And then Jesse, who hadn't played since October 18th because of a broken collarbone that he had sustained during the season, he came in, he only completed 10 of 14 passes for 113 yards, a touchdown, then ran for another. He was drafted in the fourth round by the Giants, had a nice five years in the NFL, and as I'm sure all of you know, currently does a great job as a studio and game analyst for ESPN. Guys, welcome. It is such a pleasure to have you both. And gosh, there's just so much to talk about. And Coach Spurrier, I'm going to defer to you to start this off. Mm -hmm. Let's talk first about the game. And other than the win itself, what's the lasting memory that you have from that? I mean, you obviously won it handily and jumped out to a quick lead, but what is the lasting memory other than the win itself that you have? Well, when I heard we were going to do this, I looked back and got the stat sheet. And uh, not only Jesse was 10 of 14, Doug, who started the game, was 12 of 17. So they're very similar. And uh, we got ahead 28 uh, to 3, I think, at halftime. So second half, I think I sort of called the dogs off. Jesse uh, played, I think, the whole second half. We ran the ball a bunch, killed the clock. Our defense was super that night. Yeah. So uh, it was just a good, good, solid team victory. But uh, let me tell you something about Jesse Palmer while I got him here. Uh, the Tennessee game of 2000 was the best last-minute drive for a touchdown in my coaching career. We got the ball in the nine-yard line against Tennessee. Jesse – took us all the way to the end zone. We beat them like, I think, 27-23 through a touchdown pass to Jabbar Gaffney. And then we went on and won the SEC that year. And I tell people all the time, last one or two minute drive ever, Jesse Palmer led it for the Gators against Tennessee in 2000. So it's good to see Jesse here. Well, Jesse, that for, for, for the ball coach to talk about that still to this day, that's got to make you feel pretty darn good. Yeah, you know, it does. It's so many great memories, obviously, playing for coach. And, and as he mentioned, you know, and, and you kind of alluded to as well, we, we had a lot of great teams that I was lucky to be a part of and so many great memories, certainly. And the Tennessee game was, was obviously up there, of, you know, one of my fondest memories uh, as a Gator. But I got to say the Orange Bowl is, is right up there as well. Coach is right. We, we had a really – really talented team. Um, and I remember specifically going into that Orange Bowl against Syracuse, I think just the amount of respect we had for Coach Pascaloni uh, and their staff as well. Obviously with players like Donovan McNabb and Rob Conrad, they had so many NFL guys. Keith Bullock on defense, Will Allen was going to be a first round pick cornerback. So we really went into that game, I think, respecting our opponent, knowing, you know, in, in the weeks leading up to that bowl game, to really kind of lock in with our preparation coach and, and, our, and our coaching staff put together a phenomenal game plan. Um, I remember coming out in that game and just we were really attacking and, yeah. and throwing the ball downfield and taking advantage of some matchups. But, you know, for us as players, what a what a great memory to, to get to play in a game like the Orange Bowl with so much tradition. I, I remember showing up to the stadium, you know, that that day and just seeing the Orange Bowl and just thinking to myself, gosh, all the great football memories and tradition and history in both college and in Super Bowls and the National Football League that had been there 
what a what an amazing memory for all of us as Gators that night. Pretty yeah, cool. Absolutely. And, and we're going to talk about the Orange Bowl in a minute. But interestingly enough, you know, that 2000 comeback that you had from the nine yard line, that last drive against Tennessee. Ironically, the year only two losses the year before that you were in the Orange Bowl were to Tennessee and FSU, the number one and two ranked teams. And as for Syracuse, they had come in after just thumping the University of Miami, 66 to three. So I understand the respect. Uh, yet you you guys just came out, coach. Uh, was it your idea to go, hey, listen, we're just going to we're just going to test them quick. We're just going to we're going to run this like I want to run it. We're going to have this fun and gun work and see what kind of reaction we get from them. Is that kind of what your thinking was going in? Well, we had that attitude a lot. Uh, we'd, we'd like to try to hit early, hit often. And uh, hopefully if we get a good lead, run the ball, don't do anything stupid and win the game. And fortunately, that is how that one uh, took place. Uh, Travis Taylor, our wide receiver, ended up being the most valuable player in the game, caught a couple of touchdowns, about 160 yards uh, worth of uh, passes, seven catches. So Terry Jackson ran for over 100 yards, most of it in the second half. So uh, our defense, again, though, played, played fantastic. And it was just a good win. But I tell you what, Tony, what, what I learned when you go to these bowl games, New Orleans, Miami, or whatever, we let the guys go on the town, maybe the first two nights, maybe give them a one o'clock curfew. And then we come back to 12 o'clock and then it's 11 o'clock about the last two or three nights. And what we do, Tony, we send our ball boys and managers. I said, you guys don't have a curfew. Go ahead and tell me what those other guys are doing. When we were, when we were at the Sugar Bowl playing West Virginia in 93, they'd come back and say, coach, these West Virginia guys are having a hell of a time. <laughs> drinking and yelling and screaming. And uh, and we heard that uh, some of the Syracuse guys were having a big time down at South Beach also. So we, we felt pretty good that if we could jump on them early and, and stay on them, uh, we had a chance to win the game. Hey, hey Jesse, uh, you, you can reveal now, how many times did you all and maybe your little posse that you were hanging out with on the team try to fudge that that curfew, maybe come in at 20 after one or somebody scope out the lobby first to see if anybody was there. <laughs> we were, you know, we had, we were, we were pretty good. I would say, I, I know we were trying to take it up to the very last possible minute. We'd have guys in the lobby sometimes checking it out and running on the elevator and letting us know. But you know, I, coach isn't lying. He's not kidding. I think one of the memories that I have leading up to that game was us coming back from a function on our team buses and our, our hotel would always have to drive past the Syracuse hotel. And I remember one of those nights when we were on our way back in for curfew to get to bed and, and get ready for the next day, you could see all the Syracuse players. There was a bunch of them outside their hotel and they were like getting into cabs and jumping into cars. And, and as coach says, you know, the, the, there were rumors out there that they were really enjoying South Beach and getting ready. And, <laughs> You know, I know as players, we sort of saw that. I think that's kind of when we realized, you know, because Coach was right. I mean, we had a phenomenal defense. We had a lot of NFL guys on our team. And we thought, man, if they're not taking us serious, then this is going to be a long night for them. And, and fortunately for us, you know, it, we, we came up on top. Well, it, it obviously worked. Coach, um, you know, you weren't – you you were just known as the kind of the quarterback whisperer for so long. Uh, you know, you were a, obviously – a phenomenal quarterback winning the Heisman at Florida, but you, you really didn't spend much time as a backup at all ever. Um, how did you approach the backup role? Like for Jesse, for example, for the orange bowl, um, uh, in terms of preparation and keeping him focused. And then Jesse, I want you to weigh in on, uh, you know, we keep hearing all the, you know, a backup going, yeah, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. But there are sometimes I would assume that as much have to be ready as you feel, that um, there could be moments of, of, of lapse on that. So, Coach, could you weigh in on that, on, on preparing Jesse in that backup role? I think uh, most all of our quarterbacks get to throw a whole bunch in practice. Uh, Jesse will tell you, I mean, we're, we're rapid firing. We're, we're throwing all the route tree. We're throwing inside the 30, inside the 10. We're doing passing in team. I mean, we throw the ball all day, and that's why we're pretty good at it. So uh, when the next guy gets a chance to go in, he's, he's usually ready to go. You know, you got two, two hours to practice, maybe a little bit more. 
And uh, man, you can get a lot done in practice if you go out there and just keep throwing and throwing and throwing. So Jesse, uh, he was ready. And, and a lot of times our backup quarterbacks, uh, I know he and Rex rotated the year of 2000 when we won the SEC. And uh, Jesse had to come in when Rex was sort of stumbling, bumbling around a little bit. Uh, but Rex was a fantastic passer also. He's one of the best passers I think we've ever had here. But Jesse was always ready to play. He really was. He had a, he had a shaky start up at Auburn uh, his freshman year. But after that, uh, uh, he was ready to play any time we needed him. And he played super, no question about it. Jesse, you heard Coach talk about, you know, preparing you and, and preparing his backups. Tell me about what it was like, first of all, when you got the call, when you saw Brad go down, right? Are you? Th- tell, t- give me the, the thought process that's going through your head. There was a lot going on for me in that Orange Bowl when I saw Doug get hurt because, obviously, you'd mentioned it. I, I'd broken my clavicle against LSU in mid-October, and I hadn't played since then. And so I had just gotten medically cleared a few weeks before the Orange Bowl. And so, you know, you're kind of going in the game – you know, you don't know what it's going to be like when you get tackled. Do you have confidence in your shoulder holding up? I didn't know about arm strength and velocity. You know, I'd practiced, obviously, and, and tried to let it loose. But obviously, things change sometimes when you get into a game situation. But, you know, I got, as Coach said, I got a lot of reps in practice. You know, I, I had a good feel for the game plan. And one of the things that's great about Coach, you know, all the times throughout my career, you know, whether, you know, any time a backup quarterback came in, the game, the game plan didn't change and the play calling didn't change. I, I don't think Coach Spurrier ever tried to protect a guy that was coming in a game to really try to kind of finesse him in. Like you see so many times uh, coaches do that today where they almost – the play calling becomes um, – so much more predictable because because you think everything now changes based on what a certain player's skill sets are. We all ran our offense. Yeah. Um, we all practiced the plays. I mean, and that wasn't going to change. So, you know, we we stayed aggressive when I came in the game in the Orange Bowl. And I think I threw a touchdown pass to Aaron Kenny on a 15-pass wide drag or a 14-pass wide drag right away down in the red zone. Um, it was, it, you know, it, it – Coach Spurrier kept his foot on the pedal all the time, and we stayed aggressive uh, taking shots. So, you know, kind of got that that first touchdown out of the way, and then that was sort of my big relief moment where I thought, okay, I'm fine. I've been tackled. Shoulders holding up. You know, we're scoring points. And uh, at that point, I really felt like I was in the flow of the game. And you had the speed to score one on the ground. It was only a quarterback sneak. So, I mean, I was fast <laughs> enough to get it in past the yard. Well, I know that, but I figured I'd have a little fun, you know. It's great. No, you see, it's true. In the stat sheet, nobody knows that. It's just it's a rushing exactly. touchdown. Exactly. exactly. So, I'll take it. Hey, when you get a birdie on the golf course, it may have, like, you know, bounced off a tree and onto the flag yeah. and then the cup. No one's going to know that. Right. Hey, kind of pull the curtain back. What? Tell us about some encounters you have with Coach on the sideline, and then Coach can sort of weigh in and – See if you're telling the truth or not. I think it was good. I mean, my, my I, I don't have too many memories uh, really of the sideline, to be honest. And honestly, I, I think we were clicking so much in all facets and cylinders of the game that, you know, it, we were just kind of in a, in a flow and in a rhythm. Yeah. And I think, you know, from early on, I remember Doug, we, we, you know, it's funny. We had Travis McGriff on our team, who I think broke the SEC record that year for receiving yards in a season. Mm-hmm. And we actually kind of, we actually came out really sort of highlighting Travis Taylor. We, we sort of, you know, they had a really good corner, Will Allen, I think covering Tra- uh, Travis McGriff. We sort of attacked the other side. Travis, uh, Travis Taylor caught a couple fade passes early in that game. And, and as coach said, mm-hmm. kind of got us off to a fast start. Uh, our defense was harassing Donovan. They were, they were all over him. Um, so it, it was what kind of really a, a great feel for us as players, I felt like, because we just felt like anything we were doing was working. Right, right. You know, it's interesting because, Coach, you, you're obviously known, you know, the fun and gun with the offense and all the different things you did. But, you know, both you and Jesse have brought up at least three or four times today how great your defense was. And I'm wondering if it, people just didn't realize and recognize how great that defense really was, Coach. Yeah, that game, Donovan McNabb, who went on to play very well in the NFL several years, I think he's 14 out of 30, 190 yards or something like that. And uh, the score was actually 31 to 3, and I think they scored one late just to make it 31 to 10. So our defense was fantastic that night, no question about it. But one quick story about Jesse. 
uh, his freshman year, uh, we put him in up at Auburn, and uh, he got off to a rough start, just a true freshman, and he threw a pick, and he went to sort of tackle the guy on the sideline, and he sort of fell down, and the guy cut back, went about another 40 or 50 yards. We, we got the guy down, and I think they had to kick a field goal. So we're watching the uh, tape the next uh, Monday night. I said, Jesse, when you do something stupid and throw an interception like that, at least tackle the guy, get him out of bounds, be a good defender. And then I looked at him and I said, but, by the way, let me ask you something. Have you ever tackled anybody in your life? <laughs> no, sir, coach. I've never tackled anybody. <laughs> That's my fault. We're going to do some tackling drills next week. Oh, my God. Do you remember that, Jesse? I definitely remember. And by the way, I, all, all I was really trying to do was force the defender back in bounds so that Jacquez Green. So your buddies can go. <laughs> Technically, I mean, I, I really was doing my job. I kept contained. I forced the ball back inside. I think we did a couple of, you know, I practiced a few tackling drills after that. I yeah, we did some, yeah, I just, you know, <laughs> that was, that was interesting because I don't think Jesse had ever tackled anybody. He, you know, he's from Canada and I don't even know if they play tackle up there. Did y'all play tackle or just touch? Yeah, so coach, coach, all that means is that I didn't throw that many interceptions. I never had to tackle anybody. <laughs> you were never put on special <laughs> team? No, uh, anyway. Oh, Steve, Steve, you, you've got to have some great, some great dialogue with your quarterbacks on the sideline in terms of kind of keeping them loose too, because you did a great job of, of the intensity, obviously, but there were times when, because you know, as a quarterback yourself, you needed to have a, a coach kind of deflate you a little bit in terms of letting the air out to calm you down and maybe have a little fun at the moment. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we were on the sideline. I mean, we, uh, we, we came to the ballpark to try to play the best we can. And sometimes if a quarterback, next guy goes in there, like Jesse yeah. he did several times when Rex Grossman got off to some rough starts, Jesse come in there, bail him out and we'd yeah. win the game. So, uh, now we, there wasn't any light moments too much on the second. <laughs> uh, we're trying to win the game. Jesse playing, playing Auburn as a freshman must've been daunting for you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that, that was really one of the first times I had, I had been in a, in a quote unquote hostile environment, you know, to coach's credit, you know, the week before that we lost to LSU in death Valley and coach, uh, you know, Doug was kind of struggling and he'd thrown a couple interceptions. And in the fourth quarter of that game, I mean, this proves that coach will put anybody in regardless of the situation. He threw me in the game in the fourth quarter when I'm sure their defense was was smelling blood, and I mean, you know what Death Valley is like at nighttime. Everybody yeah. does. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just it, it was unbelievable. And what a pressure situation! And, and coach puts me in, and right away we throw blue slide steamers Y six, and we hit Nafis Kareem on an in route. Uh, and I, I remember thinking to myself, surely coach is just going to put me in. We're gonna we're gonna run a draw. <laughs> and and that wasn't that wasn't coach's uh, that, that wasn't his mo. You know, so so you know that was. That was my sort of indoctrination into – because I'd only played in the swamp in, in mop-up duty before that, and then obviously going into Jordan-Hare Stadium and, you know, in that, in that, that environment and with Takeo Spikes and with some of these guys on defense. Yeah. Man, I remember things got started pretty good. We were running the ball with Fred Taylor well, and I'd hit Jacquez Green on a deep curl route. And I hit Fred on a check down. We ran a reverse that Jacquez Green threw a touchdown pass on, and we were on a, a good flow. And then I and then I threw an interception, and then I felt like the whole world, <laughs> the whole world. <laughs> that was the, that was my memory of that. That changed uh, really quick. Remember what Coach said to you on the sideline when you came off after uh, that? I, I think I think he kind of just summarized it for you a second ago. I think it was why it was two things really. It was why did you throw that, and then why didn't you tackle? Him? <laughs> probably in that order uh coach you you gotta have some great memories with the quarterbacks you've coached over the years and and the fun you had and the intensity and the, the being in the thick of it and and a guy like jesse to be here with you today it's got to be a special moment for you and to see his success today yeah and i've been around uh, jesse you know a lot uh, since his playing days here because he's on tv every day on uh, 10 different networks it seems yeah. like but anyway, yeah, we have had some good times with the quarterbacks. We had a reunion of a lot of guys who played in the 90s uh, three, three years ago, I think, three or four years ago down at Daytona Beach. 
good to see Jesse and and but all of our guys. And uh, we had we had a wonderful run there. And uh, these players, uh, most all of them are doing well. And uh, and that's what you try to do as a coach. You want to win, be successful in football, but prepare them for the rest of their lives. So Jesse took advantage of the educational opportunities here at Florida, and uh, the career he's had is uh, outstanding. That's that's yeah, it really has been. And what a remarkable testimony to you, coach. And and because you not only recruited a player who could help you but you recruited character as well and i think that's that's what's so vital today uh let me ask you about your you know you have been to and you you touched on this earlier you have been to so many bowl games you've been to them all all of them tell us about the orange bowl and what makes the orange bowl experience so special huh. well i'm undefeated in the orange bowl that's, cool. <laughs> well, that's right there is the best uh, part yeah, here's what's uh, sort of ironic. Uh, my last game as a Florida Gator football player would be Georgia Tech. Uh, I think it was 27-12 uh, in the Orange Bowl uh, after the 66 season. And then my last game as Florida Gator coach, uh, we beat Maryland 54-23 uh, to in, in that game after the 2001 season. So my last game as a player and as a coach was in the Orange Bowl. So I, I got wonderful memories there, no question. And then we won the one uh, we're talking about now against Syracuse after the 98 season. So, uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, we, 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 had a, we had some good times here. Uh, obviously, if I had to do over again, I would stay at Florida, not tried the NFL thing. And I certainly picked the wrong team to try. But that's history. But anyway, it, it, it was good to get back in college coaching at South Carolina for 10 years or so. And uh, I've, I've been fortunate, very blessed, and thankful for all the wonderful players like Jesse that, that I've been able to coach. Jesse, talk about your experience at the Orange Bowl as a player and what the Orange Bowl affords, the, affords all the players during a time here. Well, obviously, one, it's in one of the great cities uh, in America and the world in Miami, obviously, with tremendous culture. And it's, you know, so much of these bowl experience for players, I think, is, is you know, the, the different functions, the different things you get to do leading up to the big game uh, in Miami, obviously. And that's why it's hosted so many Super Bowls and so many world championships and so many things, because uh, there's just so much to do there. The people are great. The, the event staff, everyone involved with the Orange Bowl really is is top notch. And they make the experience for the players I think so special. I think as players too, like and coach touched on it, I, I think everyone understands the history and the significance of the Orange Bowl. I mean, today, we, you know, we're, we're in an age in college football where it feels like there's 75 bowl games every year now. Everybody's got a bowl game and everybody can qualify for a bowl game. Um, you know, you, you can go 500 and make a bowl game today. But, you know, the Orange Bowl, I feel like, is reserved for really good teams. You, you have to have accomplished something throughout the season to get invited to a game like that. You have to be a conference champion. Or in our case, I mean, we had a really good team in 98. We lost in overtime on the road to Tennessee on a missed field goal. And then, of course, we lost to Florida State on the road. Um, the two teams, as you mentioned, played in the national championship. And we had a really, really good team and we're deserving of being there. And, and like I said, you know, you're on the field in pregame warmups. And I'm thinking about Joe Namath. Yeah. And, and you know, winning Super Bowl three and, you know, jogging off the field, you know, holding, the, you know, number one in the air. And, and all the great Orange Bowls I watched when I was getting recruited, you know, in, in the mid-90s. Or, you know, I remember 94, 93, 95, and the Hurricanes in Nebraska you know, in some of those great teams, you know, playing in those games. I just remember that as a kid. I, I think every college football player, you know, dreams of playing in big bowl games and, and they don't get much bigger than the Orange Bowl. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And, and as, a, as a member of myself, it's, uh, I'm proud to represent and wear that orange jacket because it signifies greatness. It signifies something special. It signifies, you know, an opportunity for teams to really make a mark for themselves. Coach, I, I, I can't let you go unless I, I want to know kind of your thoughts on how things, and then Jesse, I want you to weigh on this as well. How do you think things are going so far in, in, in college football, A, uh, and, and Dan Mullen, what he's doing at Florida? And I think we, we really should have you be boastful for a moment about your son, Stevie Jr., uh, coaching at Mississippi State and their big win the, the past weekend. Okay. Uh, Dan Mullen's doing a super job here. Uh, we finished, I think, in the top 10 last two years, 10 wins, 11 wins. Uh, 
We, we need to win the SEC, of course, and beat Georgia. That's that's what we talk about up here. And uh, I think maybe this is the year we we flip that thing because they've, they've beaten us the last two years. And that's why they've been the Eastern Division champion. So we need to do that. We all know that. And do we have a team to do it? We hope so. But it, there's a lot of ball left to be played. But uh, obviously our offense here – uh, looks a little bit like some of those we had in the ability to score a lot of points. So let's hope all that happens. Uh, let's see. Your other question was the uh, – How do you think the college football game today is handling the pandemic? And, and what Oh, the pandemic. Yeah, let me talk about that. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think Greg Sankey did an excellent job of waiting, waiting, waiting. All right, we're going to play. Here's the schedule. We're going to play 10 games. Everybody's going to play each other. And some people are going to have some lousy records, and that's just the way it's going to be this year because they don't have those four games where they can schedule some people they beat. Uh, but that's okay. This is a different year, and we all understand that. And we're going to have a champion. Now, I, I realize some of the schools, Notre Dame and the other one or two others, are getting some COVID positives amongst their team, and they got to work at that. You, you can – you can bubble up your guys, and if they're really smart, I, I really believe they can stay away from it, I think. Uh, now, I don't know how the FSU coach got it, and he doesn't know how he got it, but you, you got to tell your players to really be safe and do all the precautions, and hopefully they'll do it. The good teams will do it. Those that want to play and, and win championships will do it. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, we're going to be able to finish the season and have a champion, have a playoff, and uh, get this year behind us, and and hopefully it's going to get better. But I'm going to tell you what, right now it's not getting better. That COVID-19 is not getting better. We all know that. We want to sort of misthink, I guess, our, ourselves because we're playing football. We've got other things to talk about. Uh, but cases are increasing in places, and we all need to be conscious of that. Yeah. And just real quick, you've got to be so proud of your son. Mississippi State and what they. Well, have. I've been proud of him forever. Gosh, he well, of course, I I know that. He's been very proud of him. years in South Carolina. I mean, Alshon Jeffrey and Sidney Rice and a whole bunch of guys. Debo Samuel, he's coached, uh, but he's been with Mike Leach. This is his third year with him. They have led the nation at the last two years in pass offense with Gardner Minshew and then a, a guy Gordon Anthony last year, and they, they're probably going to lead the nation in pass offense. You watched the game the other day. Yeah, they and they know how to throw it, and they do it well. And uh, Steve Jr., he's up there in the in the box, and he's on the headset with Coach Leach. He's he's the only guy that Coach Leach wants to talk to. So, <laughs> uh, what do you see? What pass you want? And they they got seven or eight passes, and they do it over and over again. So they're really good at what they do. So it's it's really going to be interesting how the year plays out. I picked them to beat uh, LSU. I do a little podcast where we pick games, and. Uh, even though they were 17-point favorites, I, I picked them to beat LSU. LSU's not near the team they were last year. And Mississippi State's got some – they got some juice. they got some momentum right now. But we got to wait and see how it all plays out. All right, Coach. Jesse, you're sitting in that ESPN seat on Saturdays, and, and boy, there's a lot going on. And, you know, the Big Ten couldn't make its, couldn't make its mind up. Pac-12 was trying to figure out what to do, Mac. Um, but kind of give me your, your bird's eye view of, of what you feel – is, is happening in college football now and how they're handling it in terms of the pandemic and, the, and COVID-19? Well, first off, I, I think K.J. Costello just threw another touchdown. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Coach, Bo Pelini just won't stop playing. Bo Pelini just won't, wouldn't get out of that press cover one, and they just, man, they just ate them alive with all the man beaters. Boy, oh, boy, that was exciting to watch. Um, by the way, it, and it just kind of, you know, with, with coaches like Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin joining the SEC, it's, it, it makes it so much more exciting. But the league always has – it's one of the reasons why it's the best league in college football is not only does it have the most NFL talent on the field, but the best coaches top to bottom, I think, as well. Um, with respect to the, to the league, you know, like Coach said, he's right. It's just a different year, um, you know, and everyone's trying to, to navigate the pandemic and keep their teams safe. And, you know, that's obviously the most important thing. And, and teams that we've seen a lot of games postponed, we'll see more postponed as we move forward. Um, you know, I think, you know, the good news, you know, it, it's good news for, for college football that the big 10 and the PAC 12 have figured it out. And they're now participating in the college football playoff. Obviously everything is going to be staggered. We know that, that some schools are only going to play a seven game 
regular season schedule and some schools will play eight. I think what's going to be really interesting when it's all said and done is, is how the, the, the college football selection committee compares resumes because this year more than ever that they're not comparing apples to apples. I mean, we talk about the pandemic and it's, it's not unfathomable to think that a PAC 12 team, for instance, could have a PAC 12 champion could get a game or two games canceled because with the way the schedule is set up now, if you're in the PAC 12 and big 10, they, they, they don't have uh, they don't have room to reschedule. Mm-hmm. So you could have a, a PAC 12 champion that's maybe only played five, six games. How do you compare that to a, a one loss, another power five team that's played nine, 10, 11 or 12 games. Uh, there's not a lot of non-conference games this year because of the pandemic. There's not a lot of common opponents uh, no crowds in stadiums, I think, devalues road wins, in my opinion, more than it does in the past. I'm not taking anything away from a team like Mississippi State that goes and beats LSU, but if LSU has a full stadium, I just think it's a little bit tougher with the crowd noise and everything else. So there's a lot, I think, to consider for the selection committee. It'll be interesting to, to see what they, what they decide. Good news is we got everybody playing again. Hopefully we can keep them safe. It, it's a crazy year, and like Coach said, we're just literally going a week at a time. And hopefully we can get through a season. Any predictions as to who the final two will be standing? I think it's hard to pick against Clemson. To me, they're they're they're, they're the, you know with their quarterback. I think he's locked to be the first pick of the NFL draft. And what Coach Sweeney's done in Clemson is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I think Ohio State's an extremely talented team. Tell you what, though, the way the Gators looked, I think they put up a coach. They put up a. I think that was a record yards for offense against an SEC opponent. I think. I think Coach even gifted. Coach Mull in a wine bottle, I understand. <laughs> it was a tiny, listen, it was a tiny bottle, one of those miniature bottles. Uh, he suggested they ought to give him a bottle of wine. And I said, when he wins the SEC, I'll give him two big bottles. But I gave him just a little miniature. I said, that was a miniature uh, achievement uh, to break the record. I didn't even know it was a record. It was total offense in a game against an SEC opponent. Right. And I it, we did it against Mississippi State in 2001. Uh, so anyway, I didn't know there was a record. So it wasn't a big record. So when he wins the SEC, I gave him a big champagne and everything. <laughs> so since it wasn't the big record, you gave him the smaller bottle of wine? and then when oh, he gets- those little miniature things. Okay. Like a little six-pack of beer. a little four-pack of those little things. Yeah. All right, so- this was not a big achievement. I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to tell it. it was when, he wins it, uh, when he wins it, you're going to give him the Magnum? Oh, I'll give him a big champagne, and every, the whole bit. We're celebrating he wins SEC. You got it. And any any it's predictions? So any predictions from you, coach, as to who's going to be uh, the we final? Got a chance. I think we got a fighting chance. Alabama's still the biggest, strongest, highest. Uh, they recruit better than everybody in the SEC all the time. Clemson, Alabama will be probably in the final four. Uh, could another SEC team be in there? Yeah, I think so, probably. Uh, can we win the SEC? Got a fighting chance, uh, but a lot of football left. Uh, but we really, Kyle Trask and these receivers are, are really good. I, I think we can throw the ball effectively most of the year. But of course, you got to play defense, play the, and we got the best kicker in the country. This game yeah. is one of the best. So Florida's got a good team. We're, we're in good shape, but uh, you, you got to play it out and see what happens. And keep everybody healthy. Uh, I got to tell you, guys, this this could not have gone any better than we would be imagined. It's so much fun and so honored um, to have you, Coach Spurrier and Jesse, to have you. You guys both have busy schedules, so all of us at the Orange Bowl are are really honored, and we thank you so much for joining us on the special In the Trenches. It was great. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Glad to be with you, Tony. Always good to see Jesse. Take care, Jesse. Great seeing you guys. Thanks so much. All right, Jesse and Coach, thank you. Thanks again. And, of course, all of you, keep an eye on your email for more information on when our next video will take place and who will be involved in that one. In the meantime, we are all hopeful, extremely yeah. hopeful, of having you join us at the 87th Orange Bowl on Saturday, January 2nd. And we invite you all to check out orangebowl.org for more additional information on the game and on tickets. And for all of us at the Orange Bowl, again, a special thank you to Coach Spurrier and to Jesse Palmer, I'm Tony Segreto. Thank you so much for joining us.